pained my heart the other day when I saw some of the children of God arguing about the only begotten Son of God. Thinking that Jesus was born some, at some point back before he was born, before he came to this world. Let's read this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When the Bible says to us that Jesus was the only begotten Son of God, it means that he is the only one born in that way. Let me try to explain it to you. When we read Micah chapter 5 verse 2, it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Meaning Jesus, before he came and was born as the only begotten, his existence before that point, was from everlasting. When we mean everlasting, we mean like the numbers. All of us know the numbers. They go back to negative infinity. And the positives, they go to positive infinity. There's no end to numbers. Why should it be difficult to understand that Jesus, we understand the numbers, that they go forever into the past. But it should be easy for us to understand that Jesus was never born before he came to this world. He is from everlasting. And when he came here and he was born, um, that birth was special, not because there was no union of man and woman so that Jesus would be born. It was a special birth. It says he was from everlasting. The only begotten meaning, he's the only one that was born like that. Let me explain. Of all of us, when we are born, at the point of birth, that's our point of beginning. But when Jesus was born, that was not the, the point of beginning for him. He told them, before Abraham was, I am, the great I am, the self-existent one. He's always been there from the past. But his birth was special in that the everlasting one gets born. That is why it's called. He's the only begotten, only one born like that. But you know a beautiful thing from that is that when we read from uh, John chapter 1, and I'm reading uh, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, not of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When we accept Christ, we also become the sons and daughters of God. Meaning, like when God made Adam, and Adam was called the son of God, uh, the, the birth of Christ, the, Adam becomes, in the genealogy of Jesus, that Adam was the beginning as the son of God. But Jesus becomes the son of God, that he's made of God. He's a new breed of humanity, a new form of humanity, who are born not of flesh and blood or the will of man, but born by the spirit of God. Just like Jesus was, was born of the spirit. We also are born of the Spirit and become sons and daughters of God. It's a new line of humanity, a new breed. All of those who are born like that, whose birth is signified by Jesus' birth, are called the sons and daughters of God because they are born. Not of flesh or blood, no sex, no union of men and women. This is the birth from God. We are born of His Spirit. Then we are born. We have a birth similar to that which Jesus had, which is called the second birth, the sons and daughters of God who are born, not of flesh, but of the spirit. And with that birth, we become heirs to the kingdom of God. May God bless you.